This is Grandmaster Daniel Narditsky. We are watching Magnus Carlsen taking on the Indian phenom Gukesh Domaraju at the 2023 Norway Chess Blitz Tournament and a handshake. Gukesh starting Magnus's clock and 1b3, a surprise as early as move one by the ever versatile Magnus Carlsen. The Nimzovich Larsen opening, which transposes into some sort of an English as Carlsen claims the center with c4, and Gukesh immediately counterstrikes with d5, a kind of Scandi like approach by Gukesh as Carlsen brings his knight out with tempo and chases the queen back to e6, and now the other knight comes out. Gukesh developing his queen's bishop and probably preparing to castle queenside, a very unconventional opening approach, but something tells me that Gukesh is still. In his opening preparation, he is blitzing out these unconventional moves so quickly in an early queenside castle, exciting, enterprising chess, as we have come to expect by Gukesh and Carlsen. He could have brought the bishop out to c4 and chase the queen, but the queen wants to go to g6 anyway, and so Carlsen choosing a more modest developmental approach. f5 by Gukesh, claiming more of the center. And Carlson castling kingside. So we have officially opposite side castling. And Carlson allowing Gukesh to drive a stake into the center. Gukesh doing just that and forcing the knight onto g5 where it attacks the queen. A little bit of hesitation there by the Indian Grandmaster. Queen has to move. Where will it go? Queen to g6 is the natural square to move to because that queen would x-ray the king along the g-file. Carlson likely would drop the knight back to h3 and perhaps reroute it to f4. No, but queen to e8. A very interesting approach and surprised Carlson examining the move there. The queen drops all the way back to the eighth rank. And now most of Gukesh's pieces are stuck on the last two ranks. And now Carlson, for the first time, taking a significant thing and trying to figure out a way to improve his position. He, of course, will eventually want to attack Gukesh's king on the queen side. So the rook from a1 can come into the game via c1. Carlson could also... Uh, initiate a pawn storm with a3 and b4. Of course, the knight on g5 is kind of stuck in the netherworld. It can be chased away with h6, and perhaps Gukesh can follow up with a pawn storm of his own, and Carlsen trying to nip that in the bud with a very instructive move. f4, freezing the central pawn chain, and in the event of h6, the knight will drop back to h3, and it won't be as easy for Gukesh to get his kingside pawns rolling with g7, g5. He can take on Passant if he wants to, but he chooses instead to chase the knight away, and back the knight goes to h3. Gukesh continuing his own development, bringing his knight out, and tucking his king away to relative safety on b8, escaping the x-ray that the c1 rook was exerting. And now there's that a3 move by Carlsen. Pretty standard fare in these types of positions. a3, b4, kind of a reverse Sicilian-like idea. And that pawn can move up to b5 and chase the knight out of c6. And so the c-file will start to clear up. And Gukesh, now it's his turn to take a bit of a think. He hasn't completed his development, but it's not easy to find a good square for his dark squared bishop. Bishop d6 would run into knight c3 to b5, and that would play right into white's hands, and Gukesh instead moving the other bishop and optimizing its placement, putting it on e6 and opening up an x-ray of his own, but not against white's king, rather against white's queen. And that very same queen can move up to c2 and double up with the c1 rook. Let's see what Magnus chooses here. b4 also comes to mind. The d2 pawn is a bit of a weakness. It's a backward pawn, but it cannot be easily attacked. Perhaps queen d7 can serve that purpose, as Carlsen does indeed complete uh, the plan that he started with a3 and brings up the pawn chain up to b4. And Gukesh, his turn to think. He can develop his bishop, and instead he plays queen to d7. So he does find a way to exert pressure on the d2 pawn, now, rook c2 here would be the natural move, but that runs into bishop e6 to b3, pinning the rook and the queen. So Carlsen has to play more creatively here. He can go all in. He can throw the kitchen sink at black with a move like queen to a4 and sacrifice the d2 pawn. But once the d2 pawn falls, the bishop on b2 is going to be hanging. The pawn on e3 is also going to be hanging with check. So Carlsen, maybe he'll bring his knight from c3 all the way back to b1. That would be another way to defend the d2 pawn. And the benefit of that move it would be that it opens up the C file and exerts more direct pressure on the C6 knight. And a pretty long think here by Carlsen as he continues to ponder this critical moment. The pawn could also reach B5 and counterattack Black's knight, but then Black's knight could slither its way into A5 and then chisel its way into B3. So Carlsen has to be careful not to weaken some of those light squares on the queen side. And more thinking as Carlsen 
He changes thinking poses and now leans in. And he seems like he's about to make a move. Knight B1 is the move that I would choose here. But Carlson is Carlson for a reason. And that is because he finds creative solutions in critical moments. But Knight B1 is ultimately his choice. And Gukesh pre-moved Knight E7 as he shifts the Knight back to E7. And Carlson slams his Bishop into E5. And that was the drawback of Gukesh's last move. The C7 pawn is under fire. And Gukesh uses his other Knight to defend that pawn. But here comes Carlson's other Bishop. And it exerts pressure on T5. I didn't like Gukesh's decision to move his Knight away from C6. It feels like Carlson now is firmly in control of the initiative. The Bishop on E5 is a pest. The pawn on C7 is under fire. So so knight g6 perhaps would serve the purpose of chasing the bishop away. But Gukesh, he does it from the other side. Instead, he moves his king away. And now the pawn on c7, if necessary, can advance to c6 and lend some much-needed support to the knight on d5, which is now under even more fire as Carlsen brought his lady out to b3. And he's got a little battery aimed at the d5 knight. Gukesh doesn't have anything going on the other side of the board. We haven't even talked about a black attack against white's king in a long time. Perhaps it's time for black to prepare something like that. But Gukesh continues instead to play on the queen side. The knight comes back where it started on c6 and chases the bishop back to its Fianchetto square on b2. And finally, Gukesh starting to prepare something resembling a kingside operation. But will he be in time as Carlsen redevelops his knight to c3? And the pressure on the d5 knight has reached a peak. And black cannot take on c3. The e6 bishop would have fallen with tempo. So Gukesh, he strikes at the kingside. And we've got a big trade in the center as the queens come off the board and two pairs of minor pieces come off the board. And what do we make of this result? endgame, it actually doesn't look all that bad for the Indian Grandmaster. The pawn on d2 is still hanging. Black's king is relatively safe, and Carlsen, he has to waste a tempo to defend that backward pawn on d2, and Gukesh sends his g-pawn forward, chases the knight back to f2, and the king side is now basically locked up. Both kings are actually relatively safe, so the position uh, is now a lot more strategic in nature, and Gukesh uses the queen side in order to shatter White's pawn chain, a5 was an excellent move. Very alert by Gukesh. And he creates a weakness on a3 that Carlson now has to defend with his other rook. It feels very much like Gukesh is now in charge on the board and on the clock. Carlson with 12 seconds on the board to about 25 for Gukesh as the bishops come off the board as well. And Carlson's knight... It cycles back to h1, and what a move as the knight jumps around forward to g3 in order to put pressure on black's only weakness, the f5 pawn, which black has to keep under supervision. Right now, the rook on a5 is doing the job of laterally defending the f5 pawn, and Gukesh sending his own knight back. How many beautiful knight maneuvers have we had in this game? And Gukesh, he centralizes his knight. Where is it going to go from e6? Well, nowhere for now. He's going to improve his pawn structure, and Carlsen is going to do the same, and Black is going to bring his king up, and the pawn on a4 there was untouchable. So Gukesh, he overprotects the f5 pawn with his other rook, and he guarantees a nice platform for his knight on d3, and he continues to put pressure on Carlson, who seems to be on his last legs, and is Carlson dropping the a4 pawn? I think Gukesh could have taken that pawn, but instead, he moves his rook back to a7. He hesitated, and now he brings his knight to d3. He was threatening a fork on c1. Alertly, Carlson brings his rook back, but here go Gukesh's pawns. He shoves his pawn down to b4, and Carlson trying to use his a pawn to generate counterplay, but he's going to lose that pawn, and he clings to it with both of his rooks. He doubles on the a file, but can Gukesh send his b pawn further up the board? Can he play b3? Gukesh using his last seconds to calculate the variations and patiently shifts his rook over to b5. He follows the rule, rook behind the pawns, and in comes the pawn. To b3 it goes. And after a little hesitation, to b2 it goes, and he forces the rook to b1, and Gukesh finally eliminates Carlsen's only source of counterplay, the a6 pawn, and a last-ditch attempt by the world champion. He ain't done yet, and Gukesh might have blundered a little bit there. He's given up the f5 pawn. But Carlson chooses not to take it. He instead brings his king into the rescue. And Gukesh chases the knight away. He forces the knight to take the f5 pawn, but jumps the knight to d6. And he stops rook c4. And Carlson eliminates another pawn on e4. And he's turning this game around, as we've seen him do so many times. He's brought his knight back to c3. He's won two of Gukesh's pawns. And Gukesh has been unable to promote the b pawn. And now it's Carlson's turn to push a pawn on the other side of the board. Suddenly, a pawn is on f6, and it's Gukesh who has to send his pieces back to stop the pawn. And Carlsen, with his last seconds, can he find a way to squeeze that pawn through to f7? A lot of hesitation. 
And again, the knight mounts a journey to e4, and there's a c5 square that Gukesh has to watch out for. And there's f7 forcing Gukesh to take that pawn. We've got a trade of rooks. Carlsen with a fork on d6 and takes the pawn on c4, and he's also going to win the pawn on b2. But in return, Gukesh, he's going to take the pawn on g2, and we've got yet another endgame. And this is very much a three-result game. Can Gukesh get to that h2 pawn? And he does. And knight e1 was clearly missed by Carlsen, who shakes his head. Knight f3 is going to come with great effect. Carlsen shoves his central pawns up the board. We're going to have a pawn race to end this game. This game just never seems to end. D5 check by Carlsen. Is he going to push his other pawn up to E5? But Gukesh seems to be faster here. Because once Gukesh takes the pawn on H2, well, then his pawns are going to be harder to stop. Black's king is right in the middle of White's pawn chain, making it harder for Carlsen to advance his pawns. And here comes Gukesh. G3 on the board. Carlsen brings his knight back to the rescue. And H3 is on the board. And Gukesh is going to jump his knight back with check. Oh, knight g4 check, and he's going to play h2, and he's going to promote first, but the game is still not over. Carlsen, he's going to take the knight, then he's going to take the pawn, he does it in the other order, and Gukesh still has to win this game. He keeps checking the white king, but he doesn't seem to be able to make progress, and now it's Carlsen pushing his pawn up to d6. Does Magnus Carlsen now have a miraculous fortress? The king moves up to d7. Gukesh almost lost on time there. He is trying to separate, to separate the king from the e5 pawn. But Carlsen, he is managing to keep his king on a square where it defends the knight and the pawn at the same time. Gukesh might have to force a draw here. I don't see a win, much less with five seconds on the board. Gukesh has to be careful. You could easily miss a fork here, and he's trying to shoulder white's king off of its dominant post on f4. So Carlsen just shuffles his knight. And black can't bring the king up to e6. It would have gotten forked on g5, and it still will get forked. And Gukesh continues to repeat the position, trying to desperately find the best square for the queen. But White's knight is expertly blocking off all the important checks. And Carlsen's king did get separated there, but e6 check. Oh my goodness. And now Carlsen is winning chances. Which pawn is he going to push? He pushes d7, but he's got to be careful. Knight b5 check. Last seconds. How does Carlsen defend e6? He might have overpressed. King to d6 runs into queen d3 check. He goes knight d4. He still tries to keep his pawns protected. And off we go again. Gukesh keeping his queen between White's king and White's pawns. And e7 check was a huge blunder. And Magnus forgot that Gukesh could take d7. He thought that Gukesh had to take e7. And then the White Knight would have forked Black's queen and forced a draw. And instead, Carlsen makes the final blunder. And what a monumental win for Gukesh. What a game. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the link in the playlist for more of these Blitz videos. Thank you so much for watching.